Okay, so before we go back to the L for all bar problem, I want to talk to you a little bit about why it's important to think about visualization and statistical representation when you're building these models. Um, and one of the reasons why, and we mentioned this a couple of times already, but I just want to kind of really hammer it home, is that the means and the standard deviation, a lot of these statistical uh, analysis that you normally use for models are not that necessarily that meaningful uh, for agent-based models. Now, in general, uh, you know, there's always exceptions to that. There's always simple models that are well-behaved and for which you can use the means. Um, and, but I just want to show you some examples. Um, uh, and these aren't even agent-based models. These are purely statistical models uh, as to where means don't really tell you that much useful information, right? So what I've done is I've created a very small little net logo model. And in this net logo model, right there's just these three global variables and one of them um, generates um, uh, a set of numbers and this uses the n values command in NetLogo and n values takes a input number uh, the number of values you want to generate and then a reporter and then generates a list of that many values right so here we're going to have a thousand um, element list in which each element is a draw from a random normal distribution with mean of five and standard deviation of one, right? Um, and then we're gonna also do um, a n values of a thousand for this bimodal distribution, which is a reporter I created. And essentially what this does is it draws from a random normal with mean of 2.5 and a standard deviation of one, 50% um, of the time, and 50% of the time it draws from the same distribution, but then adds five to it, right? Um, and by the way, this is a cute little command if you ever want to do something that kind of uh, alternates. What we're basically saying here is if random two equals one. So random two in NetLogo will generate a series of random numbers between zero and the maximum uh, minus one, essentially. So in this case, it's zero or one, zero, one, zero, one. And this is basically saying if that number happens to be one, which is gonna happen half the time, then execute this command, otherwise execute this command, right? And then the final distribution that I've generated is a list of a thousand values that are drawn from a random exponential distribution where the mean of that distribution is five, right? So if we go into the command center and we just type in setup, it will call all those commands and then when it hits the reset ticks, it'll plot that data using a histogram, which is what we're about to talk about in the l 4 bar problem. Um, but as you can see, the means of these three um, uh, distributions are actually quite similar to each other. In fact, if we hit set up again, we'll get slightly different variations because we only have a thousand values. Um, and you know you you can kind of see, but the means are constantly going to be the same. But the actual distributions are quite different, right? We have a two peak distribution, we have a single peak distribution, and we have this uh, left skewed distribution, right? Uh, and so I just want to really drill in the point that it's very important in agent based modeling to visualize your data, to take a look at it, and see. Uh, what it actually contains rather than just using means and standard deviations to describe your data. Um, so that being said, let's go back to the LFR bar problem where we were just using means and kind of take a closer look as to what the underlying data tells us about the distribution of, uh, quite frankly, the distribution of wealth in the LFR bar problem.